Everywhere you look, Allah has done something for you which you don't deserve. From the oxygen you breathe, to the heart beating inside your chest, to the white blood cells fighting disease, to the eyes that show you colors, people large and small. Every inch of your body is a gift from Allah. But the thing is, we don't realize that we have been gifted this. Every inch of the world around us is a gift from Allah, but we don't realize this is all gift for us. Because we become desensitized, we become used to it. We think, oh, Adi, water, yeah, every day. I drink water every day. Who drinks water thinking about how this water reached this bottle? Allah sent rain from the sky. How it, the clouds developed, how they formed, how the water fell, how it went into the dam, how it was filtered, and how it was processed to reach this bottle. We don't know, so we just drink, glug, 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 glug. And never we say, alhamdulillah. To reach and develop the love of Allah, we have to develop a love for His blessings and an appreciation for what He has given us. If we don't do that, we'll never love Allah. We will live life like zombies. We will live life on autopilot. The real lover of Allah is the one whom every moment they are saying, amazing. I didn't deserve this. Look what Allah gave me. Look what Allah gave me. Look how amazing is, is my creator. And this, look how amazing is my creator, is constantly on their lips. When you appreciate this, but to appreciate this, you need some time to yourself. It's hard. It's hard because of these devices that we have. They don't leave us alone. Never are you alone. Before humanity, you know, we're sitting in a waiting room, 30 minutes, you're waiting for something, you're by yourself. You're traveling from one place to another on your camel for 10, 15, 20 days. You're by yourself. Nobody's bothering you. No notifications. No, you have time to yourself. Today, we don't have time to ourselves. So little do we reflect on what Allah gave us. In fact, the moment we open our phone and we go to Facebook, we go to Instagram, TikTok, what are we looking at? What Allah didn't give us, but he gave somebody else. Look at that car. That dessert place. Oh, look at that. Mashallah. Oh, look where they are. Morocco, Spain. No. You are constantly exposed to what you don't have. So you increase in ingratitude to Allah and you start to dislike your creator. The love of Allah comes from appreciating the handiwork of Allah. This is what Allah is showing us. In this verse in Surah Al-Baqarah. And when you love someone, when you love you start to follow. You don't even realize. You know, how many children here? You two boys. Boy with the red shirt. Red Adidas shirt. What football team do you support? La <laughs> ilaha. <laughs> it's okay. Sheikh, we'll let, him, we'll, let him, we'll let him off. He said Manchester City. Inshallah. Inshallah. We don't apply capital punishments in the masjid. Okay. Who's your favorite football player? Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo. Where's the loyalty to City? Ah, khalas, no problem. Okay. So whose t-shirt are you wearing today? Is there a name on the back? Huh? Ronaldo's name on the back. You see this, gentlemen? When you love someone, you want to follow them. You want to wear what they wear, walk what they walk, play like they play. This is, this is the living evidence. This is why after this verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, three verses later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about people who followed other people blindly that they loved and they led them down the wrong path. Because there will come a day, everybody's following someone, whether you like it or not, you love and you follow someone on this earth or someone outside this earth. Because human beings, it is a human instinct to love and to follow. Those who followed other than Allah, who loved other than the Prophet of Allah, they continued to follow the, though their beloved and they took them down the wrong path. And then on the Day of Judgment, they stand there and the ones they followed, the leaders will say, we don't know who these guys were. Our followers? I have no idea who these guys are. So I have nothing to do with them. Tabarra'a. They disassociated themselves from them. Cristiano Ronaldo on the Day of Judgment will say, I have no idea who this young man is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know who he is. I have no idea who he is. And this is it. Love leads to following. Inna al-muhibba liman yuhibbu muti'u. As the Arab poet used to say, 
If you loved, if you really loved, you would be following them. And this is why the secret behind the ayah in Surah Ali Imran. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبَكُمُ اللَّهَ Oh, Muhammad, tell them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you really love Allah, then you have to follow me, and Allah will love you in return. It's not just a commandment. He's not saying you must follow me. He's saying if you really loved Allah, you would automatically find yourself following me. That is the nature of love. Love leads to following, leads to imitation, leads to obedience. And any love that doesn't lead there is a fake love. It's not a real love. You know, the pre-Islamic Arabs, classical Arabs, when they would start their love poetry, and these, these poems have been memorized by the Muslim scholars for centuries to preserve the Arabic language. The poem starts with a lover standing at the ruins of the house of his beloved. His beloved is not there in the house. The house is destroyed and he is standing there and reminiscing, remembering nostalgically the days when he used to see his beloved. Amurru bid diyari diyara layla Uqabbilu dhal jidara wa dhal jidara Wa ma hubbu jidari shagafna qalbi Walakin hubbu man sakana diyara As the famous Majnoon Imr al-Qais used to say I walk around the houses of Layla and I'm kissing the walls of this house. And it is not that I'm in love with the wall, it's a piece of cement, but I am in love with the one who used to live in these walls. This is what love brings about in a person. It brings, makes you love everything that was touched by the beloved, every effect that was left behind by the beloved. Today, people, tell me somebody here who had a parent who passed away the last couple of years, a mother or father that passed away. Yes, Sheikh, who passed away in your family? He remembers the memories, yes, going for a walk with his father. Maybe now, when he walks by himself, he remembers when he used to have a companion in his walk. This is what happens. When you, there is a beloved, when you love someone, you miss the traces that were left behind by this person. And when we love Allah, what did Allah leave behind for us in this earth? He's not here. What did he leave behind for us? Yes. He left behind his creation. Everything you see is a trace of Allah. It's the names of Allah in real life is everything you see. But there's one more thing Allah left behind, the closest possible way to reach him. Yes. The Prophet ﷺ, there's something, the Quran. What is the Quran? It is the words of Allah. Imagine, your father passed away, your mother passed away. May Allah grant all your parents a long life. Say, Ameen. Ameen. And when they pass away, you find that they left some letters in a closed box inside your cellar. A series of letters addressed to you. Dear son, dear daughter. And in those letters, they have left behind the advice from their whole life. What will you do with these letters? We'll throw it in the bin? We'll frame it on the wall, right? You'll keep them in a safe place, right? Every time you remember your father, your mother, you'll go back to read these letters. Do you know what is the Qur'an? أُبَلِّغُكُمْ رِسَالَاتِ رَبِّي وَأَنَا لَكُمْ نَاصِحٌ أَمِينٌ As the Prophet said in the Qur'an, it is a letter from Allah to you. Allah left a letter for you. There's a letter addressed to you and to me. Those are his words. Allah may not be here physically, but he left with us the closest thing possible to the company of Allah is to be in the company of the Quran. Because when you recite the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to you. If you want to develop the love of Allah, get used to developing the love for his words. Anybody who has no connection with the words of Allah, how can they have a connection to Allah? The Prophet ﷺ sent a small group of people on an expedition. And he sent amongst them one man and he made him the leader of that expedition. And the leader is also the leader of Salah. That's why our Imam is our general and our Sheikh and our minister as well. The leader in Salah is a leader in all matters. And so this man, he was left, he was leading Salah. And every time he prayed Salah, he read the same surah. Anybody know what surah did he read? Yes? Surah Al-Ikhlas. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Every single time. You know if Sheikh Muhammad Ali did this every single time? 
Maybe you wouldn't give a five star rating for Masjid Al-Furqan. I need to change the station. You know, I need some variety. Okay. Every time he's reading Surah Al-Ikhlas. So they went back and they complained to the Prophet The Prophet didn't say anything. He said, go bring him. Let me ask him, why did you do this? He brought the man. Why did you do this? The man said, لِأَنَّهَا صِفَةُ Rahman, Because it is the description of the most merciful. فَأُحِبُّ And I love to recite something that describes Allah. Who loves, whoever loves Allah, would love to hear Allah being described to him. And there's nothing that describes Allah better than Allah himself.